Next up, I already see things that in this conference, because there's every conference, every event, every talk, every person can improve on their own steps towards inclusion and equity in tech. We have a long way to go. So I have to say, when I was asked to look at which track I wanted to host, this was the one because this was the talk I was most excited about and to me is most important. Um, this is a really exciting continuation because I think Mark Ward's keynote definitely brought us, introduced us to this topic and mindset. Even though he was talking about the state of API banking, he brought a lot of diversity, equity, inclusion into his discussion that needs to be brought into everything we do. So I'm just really excited about Shanae's talk on focusing on how specifically how to design equity inclusion into all parts of the API lifecycle. I'm super excited to have you. And please, everyone, this is a really important one to share what you're learning with your teams and then through hashtag API days. Thank you, Shanae. Thank you. Thank you for that welcome. I am so happy That's to safe. be here. And um, so I am someone who is, is definitely like many of you, uh, definitely curious and uh, definitely someone who, who loves technology and loves learning new things. And there were some things that came up during my career um, that um, brought up like some of those historical uh, relationships and harmful language um, within APIs, within uh, some of the, the code bases that we use to build products being used by global teams. And being someone who definitely wants to make sure that we are designing great user experiences and also making sure that we are welcoming uh, API designers and API consumers from all backgrounds into this community. It's very important for me to share this information with you and I hope that you walk away with some ideas that you can take with you back to your teams and to your organizations. So again, just a very brief intro. My name is Shanae Chapman. I am a UX designer. So I am a consultant at my business, Nerdy Diva. Uh, we do teaching like this, sharing information, and also uh, doing our research and design mockups and prototypes for developer tools. I also am an adjunct professor. I teach at Lesley University and previously have worked on Swagger and Swagger Hub. So know about the API space and know about some of those challenges that API designers and consumers face as well. So I'm gonna share a little story with you. Uh, previously throughout my career, I worked with uh, teams with developers and product managers, and we were working on new search functionality, using APIs, developing new APIs, and every day I was hearing master, slave, about the uh, relationships with the APIs. And for me as a black woman, uh, African-American woman, uh, whose ancestors were enslaved people and also were slaveholders, it brought up a lot of those historical relationships of uh, inferiority and superiority and definitely was hard to focus on solving the problems for our users and really um, you know, having that connection uh, with my team and being uh, seen and heard and accepted and belonging to that team as well. So we had weekly retros with this particular group and I brought it up. I was in a safe space um, and with people who um, made time for me to share and listen to me. And I said, you know, this really bothers me. And they immediately, uh, a group of guys, group of uh, white American guys with European ancestors, they empathize with me. And they say, you know what? I don't want you to feel that way. You are a part of this team. And if this bothers you, it probably will bother other people as well. We can find other terms to use. We can make sure that this language is more inclusive going forward. But there was one person, just one, who said, we have always done it this way. Uh, that's the way it's been created. And that's the way that we've seen it time and time again. Um, but I also want to share with you today that you have the power to do better. And fortunately for me and that team, we then move forward and use alternative terms going forward. So we use new terms. And we still were able to talk about the relationship with the APIs, but do it in a way that the language focused on that relationship and then bring up a lot of that historical harmful language uh, in the process as well. 
And this can be important for uh, the team health. So you're working with a team of designers and uh, product managers and business people, business stakeholders. Uh, we talked about that earlier today. So establishing a relationship where we are being inclusive, where people belong, where we are practicing what we believe in terms of equality and diversity and inclusion. Uh, and that helps build support. That helps build trust within your teams and engagement. People feel like they belong and they want to bring up their ideas and share information and solve problems effectively together. Also for our consumers, global, across the world, uh, people of color and, and people of all different types of backgrounds. So making sure that um, they feel like that these tools are for them as well, that they can use these products, that um, they are encouraged to use these products. And that will increase your customer adoption as well. So those emotional uh, things, those uh, things that we think of not being that important with technology actually help with some of those uh, you know, communication tactics and helps with the psychology of people wanting to use your tools and wanting to share that with other people as well. And there is some work from the developer side on this, and I'm not going to um, you know, say that there is not, and I'm gonna you know, tell it to you uh, in real talk, um, but that impact and that empathy towards creating a more equitable society outweighs that effort, and it leaves a legacy that we can continue to build upon for generations. So some of the target goals with having inclusive APIs is one that community health, having trust and safety. So again, some of those emotional like empathy uh, types of uh, feelings and communications that can help with user adoption and also encourages inclusive creators, inclusive API designers and consumers as well. So very briefly, we're gonna step into some of our lean startup principles uh, in creating these inclusive APIs. Uh, we're gonna talk about how do we actually do this? How do we practice this? And we're also gonna um, tap into some case studies and do some discovery of what is already in uh, our industry. So I like to start this off with a quote around uh, uh, systems of oppression and inequality, um, because the idea is that these systems were designed and therefore they also can be redesigned. So again, you have the power to uh, be intentional when you see language that is uh, offensive or historically uh, brings up issues of uh, oppression. There's ways that we can change this and move forward together. And also a great book by uh, Ibram Kendi on how to be an anti-racist. And the idea is when you understand what racist ideas and policy is, you begin to realize there's a fundamental contrast to that and that contrast is not some sort of neutrality. So that really uh, ties into um, acting on what you believe and not only saying, hey, I believe that uh, diversity and inclusion is important, but actually how do you practice it as a developer, as a uh, product leader? How do you make sure that you are living out your beliefs every day? So we're gonna step into some case studies. Uh, and me as a researcher loves to get into some of the, the case studies and learn more about what's happening in industry. So again, master slave. So this has come up multiple times in my career in different organizations when we talk about APIs. So this is definitely outdated, harmful language, uh, brings up those feelings of inferiority and superiority. And there are alternatives that we can use that are actually more clear and less harmful. And some of those alternatives are lead, follow primary, secondary. Uh, this type of language, this master-slave language, can cause like representative harm. And I will get into that in a moment, but just wanna show you some of the uh, examples of what this looks like in our APIs. So connecting slaves, building slaves, slave interfaces, failovers with uh, master-slave, and REST APIs. So this is all over the place. And these are things to think about and being intentional and in how we write APIs, how we design APIs and how uh, our users will consume them. What language are we giving them? What language are they seeing as well? Another example is blacklist, whitelist. So again, um, that is a case of representative harm. And some alternatives to that are access lists, deny lists, 
closed lists, open lists, or block lists. So these are terms that we see a lot, but just because we see it a lot and just because it's always been done that way doesn't necessarily mean that it is the, the equitable uh, way to do things and that you do have the power to, to change some things if um, it is causing harm. So a little bit more about those terms that are used. So representative harm means uh, when a system reinforces subordination of some groups along the lines of identity. Uh, and it, it ties into stereotypes. So master-slave stereotypes of who's a master, who's a slave, stereotypes around blacklist, whitelist, who has access and who doesn't have access. Allocative harm is another term in this, uh, this thought leadership of anti-racism around systems that allocate or withhold certain opportunities or resources. So having uh, information that only highlights one group of people and doesn't highlight other groups of people, for example, is part of that uh, allocative harm. And Sophia Umoja Noble has a great book that ties more to uh, these examples at a deeper level called Algorithms of Oppression. And I definitely encourage you to check it out and, and read some of that. And um, it's really important for uh, developers and makers and designers to be able to be aware of what these systems uh, can do uh, in the space of reinforcing stereotypes and uh, preventing access uh, in an equitable way. So the more that you are aware of that, the more that you're able to step in when you see and say, hey, there are better ways to approach this. There are better ways to uh, create more equitable systems as well for our global uh, organizations and our global audiences. So a question for you in the chat, how can you design inclusive APIs? And I'm happy that you asked that. So I'm going to share with you a little bit more about designing inclusive APIs. And we'll take an MVP approach to this. So some things that you can do uh, that don't take a lot of time, but can help you stay um, aware and start doing some action today. So one, uh, start with the current state analysis. Where is there harmful language in your APIs, in your style guides, in your docs? If you don't know, um, Invite someone to come and test it out for you. Invite other API designers and consumers to uh, look through some of the language that you have. Uh, partner with UX designers like myself to help with some of that research. Even your tech writers. These are great uh, people who see a lot of that language and can be your first eyes on if the language is harmful in these corrections as well. Then you can identify equitable terms to use in place of some of that harmful language. And then lastly, replace that outdated harmful language. And um, you know, if you're someone like me who loves to make sure that there's documentation and uh, um, reasoning behind decisions, having some comments in your uh, code base around why those changes were made would be helpful as well for someone coming in later also. And this is an example of uh, a list of outdated terminology that was created from a talk that I gave at UXPA uh, earlier this year. So creating uh, a list like this can be helpful for you. What are some of those outdated terms? Uh, blacklist, black mark, uh, dark patterns. And what are some ways that we can create um, updated terminology options? How can we use that uh, within our day-to-day -day language when we talk about our APIs? And, and also for the education piece, have an information on what does this term actually mean? And then why should we update this? So it's, it's really um, about the API as communication and we are connecting systems, yes, and systems have rules, but we also are connecting people who are using the APIs and people have emotions and people have needs. So making sure that we are addressing that as well. So creating inclusive style guides is also something that you can do. So again, looking at the language in your style guides, uh, making sure you have diverse representations, people of color, people of different genders, ethnicities, uh, and also including people with uh, diverse uh, capabilities and accessibility best practices as well. Uh, Twilio has a great design system 
that they use for their developers and designers to communicate how to build upon the Twilio API. And they are doing a great job with including accessibility, best practices, and checklists. So that's an example that you can look to as well. They have a web design checklist for inclusivity, and that includes information on diversity uh, as well. Dev portals is another uh, avenue of communication. So this can be a place where you can consciously uh, consider inclusive language, diverse representations, and accessibility best practices. Uh, and Play is doing a great job here. Plaid is using uh, their developer portal as a means of communication. Uh, they're using uh, illustrations and they're using uh, knowledge in an easy to use way for their business users, for their consumers of the API to make sure that it is uh, usable for them, that people understand how to use the API. And they are being intentional as well by using diverse skin tones and the uh, dev portals and the documentation that they have. Again, with the idea that you are working on globally used APIs and you're including the global uh, community into this work and into this practice. So they're doing a great job there as well. And that's another example for you to, to use as a reference. And lastly, documentation. So again, uh, documentation is all about the writing. So making sure again that the language is inclusive, that you're using diverse representations where you are using illustrations and other characters to represent how the API would work with your end users and also those accessibility best practices. So again, from uh, Plaid, um, their documentation portal, uh, again, you see there's diverse representation in the platform. There's also information on uh, uh, how to use the uh, platform with accessibility in mind as well. Um, Twitch also has uh, UI recommendations on accessibility and making sure that um, their uh, communications and their documentation and dev portals represent their diverse creators and API consumers as well. And they also highlight uh, tools that you can use uh, as a developer from Web AIM, uh, the Accessibility in Mind organization, contrast checkers, and that can be helpful and understanding if your uh, APIs and the information that you are creating is indeed going to be uh, usable by uh, audiences that need those accessible features as well. So some ways that you can also continue this work is training and strategy, hiring an expert like myself, shameless plug here, who can help you with designing and testing inclusive APIs. And the way that that is done is assessing your current state, your community health, tracking problem areas and results, partnering with you and creating strategies for improvement. And feel free to connect with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, and lastly, I'm going to share with you about community engagement, how important that is for the adoption of your APIs. So again, that testing your APIs with diverse designers and consumers, it's a great way for you to see um, what you may overlook and find out more information about um, where there may be problem areas in your APIs, where there may be um, non-inclusive information. So consider uh, this information as you go forward. Uh, <laughs> and bring up any of those uh, information that you hear from your community into the work that you're doing and designing more inclusive APIs. So that's all I have for you today. Make an impact, start now, be clear, be kind, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. This was super important. I hope everybody's doing some command F and looking for these words right now in their code, in their documentation. It's easy to find them everywhere. Um, I work a lot in the agile space and I'm still, and I recommend everyone please write to scrum.org and scrum Alliance because scrum master is also an unacceptable term. Uh, somebody in the audience shared what is probably the best resource for this, which is the selfdefined.app, which is an easy way to just go through it's, it makes it easy. It shouldn't, it's not easy to be inclusive, but it makes it easy for you to find the glossary of terms you shouldn't use and then common terms that are used instead. 
Um, this is just, I really appreciated the resources you shared from Twitch and Twilio. I think um, Plaid I hadn't heard of, but um, I will definitely look at that because I hadn't heard of anybody touted as an inclusive developer portal before. But this is the, don't think this is niche anymore. This is the status quo. quo. GitHub changed the rules about two years ago. This is what you should be doing. And if you're not doing it, you may be against codes of conduct at different companies and organizations and your API not may not be chosen. So is there anything, what is the one thing you would like people to work on right away today? If there's something they can take on during their, maybe even the break right now we're about to have, Shanae. Yeah, I would say follow me on Twitter. Um, the first pinned link on my Twitter is the link to all of the harmful terms and some alternatives that you can use. So that can be a quick win for you to find out what those terms are and how they are used and ways to update those terms and uh, move forward uh, today. Mm -hmm. Can you remind us your Twitter handle? Right yes, now? I am at Nerdy Diva Design on Twitter. That's a delightful name. Yeah, Thank I like you. that. <laughs> Yeah, I can't stress how important this is. And uh, I see already in the chat, it's blowing up with, hey, guys, non-all-male conference. Um, That's right. <laughs> we are here. Um, <laughs> language matters. Um, mm -hmm. My friend Danielle Edmond said something that just clicked with me that the most controversial thing is that Black Lives Matter, which is like the lowest bar you can set that saying so a human life matters. I agree. Yes. Um, <laughs> which is insane, but is still considered a controversial thing. Mm -hmm. um, I am just I'm just going to take a very strong assumption that I'm sure is true that the majority of this audience is white male because even more so in tech and even more so in the API field, this is what I get. It's your job. It's not not Shanae's job. I'm really grateful she's here for this. I really hope you will hire her and other consultants and pay them good money to give this because she's given this away for free today, which is awesome. But also it's our job. Like take your privilege and use it. You're, we already know you're getting paid more. We already know you have more access to jobs. This is something you have to do. And these are what we're talking about today is really low bar, like pretty simple to do because there is for everything you're trying to transfer to do main secondary or primary secondary. There are is ample documentation explaining not only why you should do that, but how you should do that. So I definitely think everybody should do that. And just before you hit enter today in the chat, think if your language is excluding anyone or harming anyone. That's such a good point. Just being intentional and being aware and being thoughtful. That's a very good first step. Thank you so much, Shanae. I really hope everyone's blowing up everybody's Twitter with this and your internal Slack or however you communicate, because I think this is the most important. And it's super important to have self-care. So thank you so much, Shanae, for taking this time and this energy early if you're in the U.S. Um, to do this. <laughs> thank you. I have my coffee handy. So I am powering through this early morning. But thank awesome. you for having me. I'm thank very you happy so to be here and would love to speak to you all again. Okay, great. Thank you so thank much. You. And everybody enjoy your break and I'll see you.